In this section, we are going to look at uh, the mapping between the 5G GUTI and the 4G GUTI. So let me get my highlighter. Um, and we will try to understand how this mapping really works. So before we even get down to the mapping, we need to understand why do we need this mapping, right? Uh, the 5G coverage is not going to be ubiquitous at the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, so we can expect devices to switch between 4G and 5G anytime in the, if the RF conditions change. So we have seen this uh, scenario where uh, you have one device uh, which is in, uh, say, let's this is the 5G coverage, and then this is the 4G coverage, and this device can move back and forth uh, between 5G and 4G, um, and it needs to be able to register to the network and at the same time, it needs to be able to get its data services as quickly as possible with least uh, interruption in service. So in order to, uh, to make that happen, uh, we rely on this mapping uh, and we shall see how that is used. In the single registration mode, the UE can be attached to one network, uh, 4G or 5G, uh, depending on the coverage. And during the switch, However, the UE identifies itself using the GUTI, 4G or 5G. And 3GPP introduces a mapping between the GUTI to assist the UE to perform the conversion. The sent GUTI is used by the MME or the AMF to fetch context from the AMF or the MME. So let's try to understand that a little more. Um, so here, if we expand, we have the MME here, right? And we have the AMF in the 5G land. Now this device, when it is in 5G, it has a 5G booty, right? And when it is here, it has a 4G globally unique. Uh, temporary identifier. Now, if this device, uh, if it is in 5G coverage and it comes uh, into a 4G, it has to connect to this MME, right? But since the device is coming in from 5G, all the context for this subscriber is actually here. So all the context for this subscriber is, is stored in the AMF. So the MME needs to know of a way to find and fetch this context from the AMF. In order to do that, it has to first identify what this AMF is. You know, it has to locate this AMF. To help the MME locate the specific AMF, the UE is mapping the 5G GUTI to the 4G GUTI. Uh, and we shall see how that happens. Now, in the opposite scenario, say the UE was in 4G and it moves back to 5G. In that case, the context, we let me use a different color here. Uh, we'll use black. So this is the opposite case. Here, the context is existing here, right? So we'll just abbreviate context for CTXT, right? And then the UE is moving to 5G. The context is here. The AMF needs to fetch the context from the MME. So we need to transfer the context in this direction now. Now, in order for AMF to query the MME, it needs to know which MME do I first query because there can be multiple MMEs, right? In the system, similarly, there can be multiple AMFs. So in order to do that, uh, the UE is actually mapping a 4G GUTI to a 5G globally unique identifier. So, and how does it do that? Let's let's see. Now, this is where this diagram will come in handy. So, if you have, uh, so this is your 4G GUTI, and this is your Okay, so 4G, 5G. And if you uh, if you recall from your um, EPS 4G 
a days. The 4G GUTI is composed of MCC, MNC, uh, uh, MME group ID, and a MME code, and then you have the MTIMZ. Right. Uh, the 5G GUTI that we saw in the previous section, we have the MCC, MNC, the region ID, uh, set ID, pointer, and the TIMZ. Now, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the MCC and MNC, whereas there is not a one-to-one -one mapping for the uh, AMF specific fields. The TIMZ is a one-to-one -one mapping, so this is all good. So if you look at these fields, this in total is 8 plus... 10, 18 plus 6, 24 bits, right? And here, uh, this is 16 plus 10, 26, 26 uh, plus uh, 8, right? 26 plus 8 is 34 bits. So this um, is actually 16 bits is the MME group ID. Right, so this is 16 bits. If I want to construct uh, the AMF region ID and the AMF set ID, what I do is I divide my group ID and I take the eight bits uh, starting from the right to the left and I take two bits from my MME code, which is in total a eight bit number, right? So in total, I have taken 10 bits, eight from our group ID and two from our MME code. And I translate and come up with the AMF set ID. This AMF set ID is 10 bits, which lines up with eight plus two, 10, right? And then the remaining bits, so I have eight bits remaining here. These get mapped to my AMF region ID. And here I have six bits left, right? Because I have taken two, so I have six and these are my pointer ID. So this is how the AMF um, pointer is translated from your MME code. And you can do this in both directions, right? So that is why you can have uh, the translation between 5G GUTI and 4G GUTI using this way. And then the TIMZ is, is uh, is a direct one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, now, the way most of the operators are actually doing this is, um, is a little different in terms of their deployment architecture. Typically, what they are doing is they are, rather than having two different uh, elements for AMF and MME, they actually are deploying uh, uh, MME, a uh, same platform running AME, uh, MME and same platform running AMF, right? And this makes the whole translation scheme a lot more simpler because if the subscriber is in 5G, it will be connected to the AMF. If it is in 4G, it will connect to the MME. And uh, the, 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 uh, the mapping is, is a lot more simple in this case uh, and a lot more straightforward. So this is where most of the network operators are deploying co-located MME AMFs uh, just to make sure that the user experience uh, for subscribers as they move between 4G and 5G is uh, seamless. So hopefully this clears uh, the mapping between 5G GUTI and 4G uh, uh, globally unique temporary identifiers.